Hey everybody, we're live on the Crypto Coin Show and Blockchain Interviews. On this episode of Blockchain Interviews, we have Sebastian and Dan from Syscoin. And this project I know has been around for a long time. I'm really excited to hear uh, the story and what's coming up next. So if you would, Sebastian, just start us off with uh, how did Syscoin start? When did it start? And why did you guys start it? Absolutely. So hi everybody, my name is Sebastian Chepis and I'm the founder of this Syscoin project. Uh, for me, this journey really began in 2011 when I saw an article on Wired about the rise and fall of Bitcoin. And here was this article talking about this cryptocurrency, this digital currency that had been around for a while, but had gone up to something like $34 in value and crashed out back down to $2. And basically the article was talking about how this currency was essentially a failure and how it was essentially done for. But as I started reading about the technology itself, as I started finding out how, how Bitcoin actually worked, I became more and more excited about it. Um, I saw how, how Satoshi had combined cryptography and really novel concepts like proof of work to be to create something that I think was I, th I thought was really amazing and was really going to go places. So in early 2012, I made my first investment. I think I bought something like $500 worth of Bitcoin at the time, and I think I paid something like two dollars and fifteen cents for uh, for that first purchase. And um, as as time went on, I got really more and more excited about the potential for this technology. It really became very clear to me that. If Bitcoin was a distributed ledger of balances, it was also essentially a distributed le ledger of data state. And that meant that it was essentially a distributed state machine. And I could use a decentralized network like this to do a whole lot more than just be just, than just shuttle around a balance from one place to another. So I started looking at various projects. I got really interested in Namecoin because they were really using the blockchain for a very novel way to essentially store domain name information. And I kind of started extrapolating from there. If a blockchain can store domain names, then it can also store a whole lot more than that. It could store your identity. It could store products for sale. It could store certificates where people could essentially ledger information about themselves or information that they own. And it could also be used for things like messaging and escrow. And I, so I started really exploring the technology. I think I spent about six months basically just tearing apart every code base I could find. So Bitcoin, Litecoin, Namecoin, Peercoin, you name them, I looked through them. And so I spent about six months with a headache, basically, and overheating just because it was so intense to look at all this stuff and learn about it. And I very quickly came to a place where I really got what I wanted to do. Uh, Satoshi himself talked about actually having marketplaces uh, built in directly to, to, to Bitcoin. So for me, it was kind of a really natural progression. I came to kind of a core set of services that I felt would be able to be leveraged in all kinds of situation uh, with decentralized marketplaces. And essentially those services were aliases. So an alias is basically a way for you to create an identity on the Syscoin blockchain. Not only can you ledger your identity on the blockchain, but you can also get a address that makes a lot more sense for somebody else to remember. So, for example, instead of having a, a long Bitcoin like address that you, there's no way you could possibly remember it, you could, for example, send money to Sebastian.Shepis on the Syscoin network. Um, and so that was kind of the first service and sort of the linchpin of everything else. And the next big one, I think the one that we really consider a flagship service is what we call Syscoin Offers. And Syscoin Offers are a way for you to essentially list any item on the Syscoin network for sale, whether that item is a physical product, whether it's a digital good, or whether it's a service, you can use Syscoin Offers to essentially ledger that to the blockchain and allow other people to be able to find it. And, um, and I paired that particular service with digital certificates. So one of the things I wanted to do is to be able to essentially record things like licenses or certificates or even for the marketplace, things like game codes for sale, right? And so we also linked certificates to offers. And we also implemented a, another service uh, that was essentially a messaging service. 
And so that was the start of Bitcoin. We launched, oh, excuse me, start of Syscoin. That we launched um, Syscoin in August 2018 in one of the first ICOs really that that happened out there, way before Wall Street or Bay Street even knew what an ICO was. We uh, we participated in one. So we did that um, on August 20, uh, 2014, and we raised 1,500 Bitcoin in that initial uh, ICO. And we have been working on Syscoin ever since. Uh, Syscoin has gone through several iterations now of the of how the services are implemented, but it, at their core, the technology remains the same. Syscoin is a platform to conduct decentralized e-commerce that offers a set of services that can be uh, combined and recombined in novel ways to be able to create all kinds of things. Everything from things like an Upwork-like site where people are listing uh, listing jobs that they might want to uh, they they might want to fill, or something as as kind of simple and straightforward as an eBay or an Amazon-like network can be built with Syscoin. Wow, well, that's definitely that's a lot definitely of a lot. stuff uh, involved in a decentralized marketplace. I could see you know doing your ICO back in 2014. And here we are now, 2018, and I'm sure there's still many more things to be developed and to, to flesh out. So what are some of the innovative developments that you guys have come up with so far uh, on the Syscoin platform? Sure. So I think the latest innovation that we've come up with is something called ZDAG. And ZDAG stands for Zero Confirmation Directed Acyclic Graph. And it's essentially a technology that we're using in our asset service. So Syscoin 3.0 is going to include uh, a new service called Assets that will allow you to essentially create ERC-20-like tokens on the Syscoin network. Um, the technology, the ZDAG technology, is paired with Assets to be able to allow a very high degree of certainty that your coins aren't being uh, double spent within a block. So it's zero confirmation and allows you to essentially transact a chain of asset sends in such a way such that even before the next block comes along, you have a very high certainty that, that those coins aren't being double spent. So that's kind of our, our latest innovation. And obviously, as I said, the Syscoin asset service is going to be live soon, and that will allow people to create uh, all kinds of different types of tokens. So the asset service will allow you to create fungible tokens, just like the kind of basic ERC-20 spec. But you'll also have the ability to create non-fungible tokens, i.e. tokens that can't be divided up uh, using Syscoin assets, and you'll also be able to essentially record uh, um, what you'll essentially be able to mint uh, type mint uh, tokens that are linked to unique serial numbers. So think of like being able to create a token that represents a gold bar, right? So you might want to create a hundred tokens that 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 indicate partial ownership in that gold bar. And with Syscoin assets, you'll be able to actually specify the actual serial number of that particular gold bar. That, thus, you'll be able to link unique asset mintings to actual unique things out there in the world, thus opening up all kinds of different use cases. Definitely. I could see how verifiable digital assets and digital identities uh, are going to become super important moving forward um, as more regulation and legislation comes in and wants to actually incorporate cryptocurrency in the blockchain industry into real world economies. So I could see Absolutely. that's going to be existential. So that's really awesome that you guys are working on that. Um, maybe for the non-technical users, you could Explain a little bit about, we could go back to your ZDAG, zero confirmations, and what, what is the real world benefit that a user will see? Like, say, for instance, there is a marketplace and you receive coins and then there's no confirmations. Are you able to send those quickly or what is, what is the benefit to that? You can, you can turn around and send, send them uh, right away. Essentially, the reason that we developed ZDAG is for point of sale. Uh, we have a couple of partners that we've been talking to for a while that really need a technology that will allow blockchain to be used in point of sale. And uh, currently, it's just really hard to do. I mean, if you're using a blockchain with a long confirmation time like Bitcoin, no one's going to wait for 10 minutes while their, their coffee transaction is, 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 is being confirmed. Likewise, even with things like, like Litecoin that have you know, a two and a half minute uh, block time, it's still not fast enough. So what we really needed to do was, was 
find a way to solve that problem in a way that wasn't going to necessarily have to make us change the, the, the block time that we currently have. We didn't feel that that was the right solution because reducing t block time will just increase orphans. And that's tech speak for basically creating a bunch of stuff on the network that really isn't necessary or helpful to, uh, to the functioning of the network. Interesting. So for um, our crypto viewers, in a nutshell, could you explain the difference in the block time, the confirmation speed, and the transaction cost on Syscoin compared to Bitcoin and Ethereum and the major transaction networks? Absolutely. So, so uh, tra transaction speeds, or should I say confirmation times on something like Bitcoin are going to take about 10 minutes if, for you to wait for another block to come in. And also fees on the Bitcoin network are going to be are going to be variable. Whereas the way that we've set up uh, fees on on asset transactions is fees there are static. So you have you can really determine in, in a very deterministic way what you're going to end up paying on the Syscoin network if you're using assets, which is something that's very difficult to do currently on Bitcoin and also on the Ethereum network. Ethereum is fantastic. Don't get me wrong. I, I think it's a phenomenal technology and it's something that I invested in very early. In fact, several of us here uh, really love Ethereum. But there are some issues with it relative to things like scalability as well as as well as transaction fees. Interesting. And another thing to note about Syscoin is I heard that you guys are using a proof of stake model or you're going to be using a proof of stake model. And there's involved with that masternodes. Um, can you elaborate on what Syscoin is doing with that? So we're actually not moving to proof of stake right now. Uh, we have discussed it in the past, uh, but right now our proof of work model is working nicely. Where proof of stake comes in is that we have the ability to create asset classes that essentially pay out interest as you hold them. And so I suppose that would be closest to proof of stake in that you can, uh, in, in that you can essentially create an asset class that has a maximum amount of tokens that will ever be minted. And then from there, if you issue those tokens to, to people, as they hold, they'll be able to actually redeem an interest rate in essence. So this is good if you want to distribute some initial amount of tokens and then encourage folks to hold those tokens in order to earn interest. Very interesting. So as a regular user, I would be able to earn interest by doing some kind of masternode to with with Syscoin Not tokens. even a masternode. All you have to do is hold those tokens in your in your wallet, and every once in a while you can redeem uh, your interest uh, using there's there's a command on the Syscoin network that will essentially allow you to redeem whatever collected interest has uh, is there for you to grab. Right. So the interest isn't issued automatically on every block, but it is issued when you ask for it. Now to talk a little bit about masternodes. Yes. Uh, Syscoin 3.0 is definitely going to include masternodes, right? So in a way, one, uh, once we do that on the Syscoin network, there'll be two ways for you to be able to uh, to earn new Sys. You can either mine, right, which is out of the reach for most people unless they have Bitcoin uh, Bitcoin mining farms now, because uh, Syscoin is merge mined with Bitcoin. So anyone that is mining Bitcoin can essentially earn Syscoin along the way. Now. Masternodes kind of introduce a proof of stake model in that if you stand up a ma masternode, you'll have to bond it with a certain amount of sys. Currently, the, that bond is 100,000 sys, but as you run that masternode and provide services to the Syscoin network, you will be paid out every block with a reward. So essentially, the way that that works is that miners generate the blocks. However, they share the rewards with exist with running masternodes so as you run your masternode over time you'll start to see your balance increase there because you'll be re uh, receiving sys so it's kind of a nice model in that in that we use proof of work to secure our network and and consequently have really high ha hash power or something like a quarter or the fifth or a fifth of bitcoin's current hash power and so any kind of any kind of attacks on the Syscoin network are going to be really difficult to perform if you're trying to come at us with, with hash power to do it. But on the other hand, you'll also have uh, you'll also have a way to earn by staking your Syscoin by standing up a masternode. So as I said, uh, right now to to bond a masternode will cost you 100,000 Sys. 
However, um, when we launch Syscoin 3.0, there will be some services that will launch along with that to allow you to essentially become a partial participant in a masternode. So if you've only got a few thousand sys, but you still want to stake that sys on a masternode, you'll be able to use one of these services to do so. Wow, that's super exciting um, because I know a lot of people, uh, me included, when I was looking back at when Dash was doing some kind of masternode thing, I wanted to stake it and have a masternode, but I just couldn't have enough uh, of the coins themselves. And to know that you're getting rewards with Syscoin even if you don't have a masternode is very exciting. So I'm really glad to hear that. Um, if I could throw a question at Dan's way, um, where do you guys see the industry going um, in this year? And uh, where does Syscoin fit into that? And what do you see in terms of the adoption in the short term here? Uh, I think the real challenges that the industry has this year is getting over some of the speed and scalability uh, issues that we're currently focused on internally, it, not only in this next iteration of Syscoin, Syscoin 3, but also in a future iteration that we're trying to release later this year. Um, what we're finding is storing all this data on the blockchain directly is just not something that is that is feasible long term. We know that Ethereum is trying a sharding approach uh, long term. If if things go the current way that we're talking about, uh, we think that we have some better solutions planned, and we're looking forward to sharing those later this year. In the short term, we think that what we have with ZDAG is is going to really help with the the speed problem. And so once we release this coin three, really moving on to focusing on the scalability problem. Awesome. And at what time, roughly, are we out to expect this Syscoin three? Uh, so right now we're targeting Syscoin three for April 30th of, of this year. So just in about two weeks, less than two weeks now. Very, very exciting. And for the viewers, um, if how can they get further involved in Syscoin, um, use the applications, I, I believe it's called Block Market, and get involved with the community? Uh, so there are a few ways. Right now, I think the best way is probably through our Slack channel, which is uh, syscoin.slack.org. Um, in the very near term, we're looking on setting up a, a better way for the community to start participating with the Syscoin protocol and contributing to it uh, in a way that hasn't really been enabled over the past four years. And so we're really trying to grow the ecosystem through enabling more developers with the protocol. Um, in in the short term, though, I think that Slack is probably one of the best ways. And then also our Reddit channel is also very active. So uh, uh, reddit.com reddit slash r slash syscoin. Um, and that's where also they'll be able to find out more information around those new uh, vehicles we're working on to enable further contribution. Great, great. So I'm looking forward to following up with both of you guys when Syscoin 3 is released, and we'll see how that goes. So we'll look for that in the coming weeks. And thank you guys for both being here, Sebastian and Dan from the Syscoin team. And I'll catch you guys in a few weeks. Thank you very much. Thanks for having us. It's our pleasure. Thanks again.